"'Twas the morning of Berthanox, and the whole crew lay still. Well, the whole crew, that is, with the exception of Jill. She was up early, putting down decorations. Nothing could ruin this. Not even jerk penguins. She cast magic flames with a note that said, "'Warning, this is not a real fire, or we'd wake up dead in the morning. The presents are wrapped. I hope Lachlan likes mine.' Jill thought, but if he doesn't, that's fine, that's fine, it's fine. They'll eat, and they'll chow, and they'll feast, but of course, they'll have to save some for that scary-ass horse. And the sun doesn't rise in the phlogiston, per se, so she'll get to decide when they next greet the day. All the time in the world to be with those she holds dear, as they ride this old boat over to the next sphere. And all the time to reflect on that wherever they roam, as long as they're together... They'll always be home. Oh, this has gone on quite long. I am known to yammer, but enough of that now. It's time for Gem Jammer. Okay, so uh, who wants to do a Christmas special now, guys? Yay! Yay! It did just like freshly snow the whole time that we've been recording so far, so it looks Christmassy outside. Aw, hooray! Yeah. Okay, so 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 if it's Berthanox, basically Jill is up like at the crack of what constitutes dawn and has lit a fake fire. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah, and and like, are there decorations? What does decorating for Birthmas look like? Oh, Viva wants to help decorate. Uh, yeah. I don't know what Birthmas decorations look like. Uh, what do we want them to look like? Probably the paper circles. Like where you make the little paper chains, at least. I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Paper snowflakes, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Some, a, lot, a lot of, like, um, sun imagery, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some version, because, yeah, I remember, like, there's these paper Moravian stars that you make in, like, Moravian Christmas. And that's just like, it's a cool paper craft thing. Maybe there's like paper suns. Okay. Artie starts taking out a bunch of his baubles. So like bottle caps and neat sticks and uh, shiny beads. Yeah, I feel like at least the way that we interpret it is that anything kind of shiny or pretty should be put out somewhere. Yeah, I think I, I would I would imagine that Birkenox is like it's it's kind of a, a communal event, so it's a lot of like people bring whatever they got for decorations and shit. So this this works. We hang some streamers off lawnmower. Yes. It's a whole definitely like as we head into Birthanox, Elviva gets more and more secretive of working on things and don't look <laughs> and don't she, she keeps trying to pull the don't come in my room, except it's a shared room. So this like are there more, <laughs> doesn't like, work. Are there more floorboards but, that just have like don't written on them? Like don't look yeah. don't look, don't open this, don't pull this up. Uh -huh. Do you, how many how many little squirrel holes do you have festooned? Oh so many. Like, just around the ship. Yeah. A wind just starts coming into like their bedroom and being like, you just gotta tell me everything you're doing and do my stuff somewhere else, dear. Okay. I actually, I actually, I, I had something that I wanted to get wind slash cacophony to help me with. Oh, Ooh, perfect. Because I don't think, I don't think that we did this already. So we have a magic enhanced Billy Bass. Yes. What song should it sing? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, under the boardwalk. We'll be having a ball under the boardwalk. I was thinking maybe that, like, um, ah, uh, 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 like the lightning thundery kind of song that Jill likes. For when... Oh, 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 yes, the uh, pilgrim song, the immigrant, immigrant, immigrant song. song, that one. Yes, <laughs> I could do that. What would it be like if a Billy Bass sang the immigrant song? <laughs> wah wah wah. <laughs> Wah. <laughs> wah, it gotta wah, be. Wah. It has to be like really, really just shitty audio quality. Yeah, has to like be it awful. sounds yeah. like it's coming out of a MIDI speaker. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I think she'll like it. It looks kind of grotesque. I think she'll <laughs> love it. <laughs> Man, I gotta say, I had to go back over the audio to remember who I made a magical Billy Bass for, and I would have never guessed the answer was Tiliana. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the line of logic there? It was like fish. Jill loves fish. Like, Jill's a pescatarian. 
Jill's a pescatarian. We should catch her a fish. She can't eat the fish. We should make it do something. Yep. Yes. <laughs> How many eyes are on this fish? <laughs> At least three that you've found so far. Yeah. And I definitely, I imagine it's like a rockfish, kind of like it's a bottom fish. It's oh, quite flat. One hundo. Yeah. It's pretty special. Okay, thank you. All right, we have established that's a very important thing. Good. Established what the song the, the Billy Bass sings. Right, and that's continual flame is the uh, is the is the spell Jill has cast because we're in the phlogist and this is a fake fire. <laughs> it doesn't actually give off any heat or anything. It cost me fifty gold. <laughs> that's more expensive than a regular fire. Definitely true. Okay, um, so the the thing about Birthanox is that basically it's just kind of an all day like sitting around and noshing and like hanging out. That usually there's like, Jill will probably explain this breathlessly in the in, in the days leading up. But usually there's like, I don't know, maybe there's dancing or just playing or or like someone uh or like everybody goes around and tells stories or something. Usually everything doesn't really kick off until like I don't know. It starts getting it like evening around, but or like afternoon. But we can also do stuff whenever, uh, whenever you guys want. The best kind of celebration, honestly. Usually, there's a lot of charcuterie and dried fish. <laughs> there's a lot of smoked fish, <laughs> which uh, Finn had been forewarned to provide, so he has spectacular. Uh, also, I made uh, buns. They're um, they're they're saffron buns. You're, you, Okay, well, don't eat all of them. We have to save a couple for, for, uh, huh. Well, I guess we don't have to save any for the Crimson Abbas, but it'd probably be better if we didn't save any for the Crimson Abbas. Elviva pauses, a bun in each hand and one in her <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Bully all of them? Don't eat all, don't eat all of them. You gotta save a couple for the Crimson Abbas and Bone White Shock. Otherwise, he'll eat your name. <laughs> what happens if he eats your name? Then you don't have a name anymore. Huh. What if we? Do what do people call you? I mean, sometimes they just sort of, you know, I, I, I mean, it kind of varies between the stories. Sometimes the Crimson Abbas feeds Bone White Jacques your name, or sometimes uh, the she'll like put you on. Like Bone White Jacques will just eat you if you're especially bad. Huh. Eat me how? Well, <laughs> Bone White Jacques is usually a big horse, or sometimes he's a giant ram. It it, it, it varies. Now the Crimson Abbas, you know, she just comes in writing Bone White Jacques, and uh, and then she, you know, asks you riddles or or like questions to make sure that you've been good this year and that you've been, you know, a dutiful child of Ethla. Uh, and then uh, if you haven't, uh, she'll feed your name to Bone White Jacques, or you could give him a carrot. Hmm. hmm. Oh no. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just hearing dice rolling as Elviva draws results from the bags of tricks. <laughs> yeah, after, after hearing that Von White Jacques might be a goat, Elviva quickly throws the maximum amount, which is three, of fuzzy balls out of the bag of tricks, being like, please be Nomper, please be Nomper. Uh, there is no Nomper. <laughs> we we have the owl, and we have Stuart, the dog. Oh, we could and have... we have Rat Mercer, the rat. <laughs> we could have we could have dressed up Nomper or Nompling. Oh, I know. Well, we can dress up. I think Stuart's probably game. <laughs> we can dress up Stuart as Bone White Shock. Which one's Stuart again? Stuart's a Mastiff. He's game for everything. Okay. Yeah, he's a big Mastiff. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you just got this very big, big, lazy dog <gasps> hanging out with you now. Dog. Big wrinkly dog. Excellent. A lot of slobber. A lot of heat. Well, I mean, the big thing is that, you know, we're all staying up until... Huh. Well, usually you stay up until sunrise, but... Well, there's not really a... I guess we'll set a clock? I could make a fake sunrise. I guess we could probably... I could make a fake sunrise, that's true. That's a power you have. I, I could do that. Anyway, you know, you all just sort of stay up till sunrise together, and then that's the, that's the darkest night of the year over, and you spend it with people you care about this sounds great mm -hmm. you said games you play games should we play tag i'm sorry i just went to my christmas carol place i let's have a game i love games <laughs> <laughs> you fucking would <laughs> uh when does the gift exchange happen because i have a thing uh it can be kind of whenever if if y'all just want to like go straight to the gift exchange or whatever i have a list of gifts uh -huh. <laughs> Do gift exchange. Okay. Yeah, fuck it. 
Let's have some gifts. Prezies. Prezies. Okay, so do we want to like, how, how do we want to do this? Do we want to like hand them out or? I think you can probably, you can probably gather everyone in the wardroom for this. Oh yeah, everyone yes. has to sit together. Definitely. Well, everyone who's not currently flying the boat. <laughs> right. Well, maybe we can gather around the helm so that oh, they can be part call. of it too. And we can just put their presence on top of their body. I mean, they can still move and things. They just can't get up. Right? Yes. Yes, they can still, they just can't leave the chair. Okay, so we just put it all in their lap. <laughs> yeah, do we want to do we want to gather up in the helm for this so it's everybody? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do okay, it. so sure. you guys, uh, you guys all make your way up onto the bridge, which Kara's a little miffed about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you just have to deal with this. It's a holiday. You guys actually open the hatch from the bridge down to the wardroom, and that kind of uh, airs things out a little bit. <laughs> so it's not nearly as crowded. Artie does bring a plate of food. Yeah, Wynne has a uh, saffron bun in her hand that she's chomping on. Juliana, anybody who is eating saffron buns, Juliana's definitely, like, eyeing them, like, surreptitiously. And it's and this is Juliana, so it's not very surreptitious at all. <laughs> How are they? I'm guessing that they're delicious, because you worked very hard on them. I hope they're delicious. Finn, Finn, Finn gave me a, a nod of approval. <laughs> well, then I think they're delicious. I think they're great. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, some Berthanox traditions I base partially on the Feast of St. Lucy slash Lucy Nacht. So the saffron buns are from the Feast of St. Lucy. All right. So some of you crowd onto the bridge. Uh, some of you are hanging out uh, beneath the hatch uh, to the ward room because uh, those rooms are right on top of each other. But you guys all do manage to squeeze in. Okay. Who, who wants to go first? Should I go first? Should I hand up presents first? What do you guys want to do? <laughs> do it. Do it. You can it, go Jill. first. You do it, Jill. You are the leader here. <laughs> okay, so uh, I grouped this when I originally bought these into like players and then uh, crew and then mascots. <laughs> uh, so first is cacophony. You get a. Uh, it is a large soft package. Ooh. It feels like fabric folded up. What I have. What what Juliana got cacophony is. Uh, it is a large, uh, long coat that is yellow with oh. black triangles on it. Ooh! I got you the riot coat. Yes! She immediately flings it on over her shoulders. She was like, I thought, I thought that might, you know, go with some of the stuff you have. Like, you could wear, like, a big, like, ruffly shirt underneath it or something. Yes, and, like, tight black pants. Yeah. It is, it, it seemed like you. Yeah. Okay, uh, Alviva gets another, like, soft package. Uh, it is probably, this one's probably in a gift bag, so there's, like, a bunch of tissue paper and stuff with it. Um, but it is kind of big and, like, almost, like, a large square, like, the size of a basketball. Oh my god, great joy tearing all of the gift, the tissue paper out. Uh, it is a giant stuffed chicken, uh, and oh, meant, yes! to look, meant to be, like, a squishable. Uh, so it's, like, large, extremely huggable. <laughs> and Jillian's like, well, I mean... You know, you seemed really bummed about not being able to have a chicken on board. I thought maybe that would oh, substitute. This is so cute. Alviva, like, squishes it and kind of just, like, rolls over, hugging it. And is also like, Artie, look, we got new nap squad. Chicky's a part of nap squad. <laughs> it's official. I love it. Thank you, Jill. Wynne has briefly left and comes back as cacophony with giant blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I also got you, uh, I also got Breadsticks something. I don't know if you want to open it or if, if she wants to open it. Breadsticks can do it. Breadsticks. Breadsticks open the present. Okay, this is probably also wrapped in tissue paper because Breadsticks is a little dragon baby. Yeah, and Breadsticks can tear it out with their little toofies. There's a little breadstick sized purple bandana and there's a bigger purple bandana for Alviva. Oh, oh matching bandanas. Thank you. I thought maybe you guys could like accessorize. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Thank you. And then she hands a- she carefully hands a, like, a, a fairly small box to Artie and is like, do not rip this. Open that carefully. <laughs> and it's a really nice, uh, Let me see. metal tube. Uh, there's a thing on one end. It looks a bit like a spyglass. It's a really fancy kaleidoscope. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, he looks through it. I can't see. Uh, hold it up to the light, bud. Like, over in one of the windows? You wanted to blind me? No. 
Just trust me. Okay. And now turn it a little. Turn it to Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I figured you like shiny stuff, so you could probably take that with you, maybe, or uh well, it's expensive, so be careful with it, but yeah. He's not even listening. He's just <laughs> turning it over and over. He's like, oh, it's, it's out so of my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> he does manage to look away. And you see that his pupils are so blown. <laughs> Usually there's there's red in it, but there there's hardly any. And he's like, thank you. Uh, then going down to the crew list, I got Bondar a couple of uh, captaining self-help books. <laughs> I've got three titles here. How to Captain Friends and Influence Crew Members. Okay. <laughs> the Seven Habits of Highly Effective Medium-Sized Humanoids. <laughs> and who moved my spell jammer? <laughs> uh, you pass those down the hatch down to to, to Captain Barondar, and she says, "Oh well, fuck you too," but like not unkindly. <laughs> She's having fun with this. Uh, for Mister Hurst, uh, I don't know if you guys know about like novelty shaped cribbage boards. Uh huh. <laughs> I do. Yeah, well... Deeply. Yeah, so I got a novelty cribbage board that is based on a Shrike ship. <laughs> uh, so Amazing. it goes, like, it, it probably goes, you know, like, up and below decks and then back up, out to the wings, and, like, I'd say the home stretch is probably at the helm. This is so cool! <laughs> you seem like a cribbage guy. I am a cribbage guy. <laughs> Finn, it was, uh... What do we end up with? It's the pern bullshit. We got him some. I got him some sweet sand. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Finn. Finn is very impressed with this, and he signs thank you very emphatically. <laughs> uh, she hands another book to Kara, which is that dad book on the second unhuman <laughs> war. She's like, this seems kind of weird, but Lachlan said you'd be into it. Oh, hey, I don't think I've read this one yet. <laughs> How many dad books do you have? Uh, let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> uh, Veli has two uh, just ratty paperback books that are that is the filthy bee smut. Uh, it's True Love Sting and Eye of the Bee Holder. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Veli just you pass those down through the hatch to Veli and Veli's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, should I do Lachlan or the mascots, y'all? Which one first? Uh. Lachlan uh, last. If you save Lachlan for last, I, I, I have a thing. Okay, great. It, where Where is Toolbox presently? Toolbox is currently, uh, Kara's here, so Toolbox is, is with Kara, although Toolbox is rapidly reconsidering this proposition with this many people around. <laughs> okay, uh, then she's going to hand a small bag to, uh, well, uh, like a Ziploc gallon bag to Kara, and it's a giant bag of twist ties <laughs> and, and, like, hair ties. <laughs> It's like that's for that's for toolbox. It seems like his thing. It is his thing. <laughs> Kara Kara tucks that away, looks at toolbox, and says, "Later." <laughs> Lawnmower. I we 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 found a laser pointer for him. Uh, but that's right. That that'll have to be for later. Uh, and then Juliana hands down a package of like twenty old magazines to Dewey that are all from like different years and different like publications. You hear from below decks and muffled, <gasps> periodicals. <laughs> uh, and then Juliana takes the last one and kind of like shyly hands over this this hat box to Lachlan. Okay. Uh, he opens it up and goes, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, this might be a terrible idea. I don't know. But uh, you, you seem like, you know, live your dream. No, I love it. I hate that I love it. And he takes the hat out and kind of very carefully puts it on. And it is like, it's not like one of those shitty gas station like trilbies that they call a fedora. It's a proper wool felted fedora and it looks good. Juliana makes a makes a show of like fanning herself like, oh, so debonair. <laughs> and Lachlan kind of laughs a little bit self-deprecating. He says, uh, I got something for you, by the way. Juliana blinks. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's you know, it's probably dumb, but like, I I saw it in I saw it in Senegora, and I thought of you. So like, you know, while you were buying gifts for everybody else, I thought you know I should. Anyway, he hands you a very small jewelry box. Juliana is rapidly flushing, and then uh, 
carefully opens up the box. You see uh, within the box a uh, small silver, very delicately wrought uh, pendant in the shape of a lightning bolt Aww. on a silver chain. Oh, I... oh, that's so cute! I love it. Thank yeah, you. it's not much. It's it's no, no. It's you didn't you didn't have to. Thank you. Kiss, 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 kiss. kiss, kiss. kiss. Yeah, she yeah. will. She will <laughs> lean over and kiss him. Okay, there, it's, okay, it's, well, it's a sweet holes. little kiss. Not quite a peck, but, like, not making out in front of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> but she probably will, like, uh, ask if he could help her put it on. Oh, absolutely. And <laughs> you, you, you do the whole thing where you lift your hair and, and, and he puts it around, uh, puts it on behind your neck and it's very sweet. Cute. Aww. Aww, or so boy. You... <laughs> anyway, that's that's in your inventory now. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and uh, that is it from me. I think that's everybody. I, I hope that's everybody, because I, I got these a while ago. Good company glances to Alviva. <laughs> yeah, okay. Presents. Presents. I'm going to start with a big one. Jill. What? Oh. I give you a big box. It's, it's, it's probably <laughs> very lumpy, let's be real. Yeah, a lumpy box. And I say that uh, when help me with this. And I hope that you like it. Juliana looks between the two of them, carefully opens the box, and takes out it. the incredibly hideous fish. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. It's just an awesome fish, but there's more. <laughs> that, that is what I'm thinking. Wave your hand in front of the eyes, the three eyes. Okay, and she does so. Aha! <laughs> But like through the mouth of a big a mouth Billy Bass. Way. Yeah. I feel like for a minute, you probably can't quite read the expression on Juliana's face. <laughs> and then she actually starts tearing up a little. <laughs> oh no, don't cry. This is so We can pick a different song. This is so stupid. <laughs> for you yeah. it liked mini marshmallows and now it's dead but it'll live forever in the song wah, wah, wah. <laughs> wah. wow <laughs> wah, wah, wah. wow wow it's horrible i love it thank you and she is going to be she she will pull them both into a really awkward <laughs> hug <laughs> i'm never Yay. going to turn it on again how do i make it stop <laughs> I don't know there's a way to make it stop, unfortunately, but you might bury it under some blankets. Thank you for this curse. <laughs> um, okay. I also have for cacophony slash win a, a bag. She takes the bag. And I guess it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if I'll be able to figure it out. I probably asked about the tissue paper thing. I understood the way to wrap gifts. <laughs> She op- uh, 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 cacophony as, as she's currently dressed up opens the bag. And so inside there's a bunch of uh, kind of like hair ties and scrunchies Ooh. made out of like leather and different colorful fabrics. And there's some that are like really bright and colorful and some that are more just kind of mellow. Ooh. And Alviva's like, there's some for when you're feeling cacophony and some for when you're feeling win. And just... uh. She instantly I used takes to out your like hair ties a lot. I, I I assume that one is like has bees on it, so she instantly takes it out and puts her giant pile of blonde hair up into a high ponytail. Yay! I made these. I hope you like them. I love them. And she gives Alviva a hug. Yay! And for Artie, I there's another like lumpy fabricy package. Huh? What? Oh, this is for you. Uh, he. Is it paper? Is it fa- what is? It? It's it's paper around some fabric. He tears the paper. It is a like hand sewn together from bits of of cloth, a little bit rough pillowcase in like a bunch of like <gasps> clashing patterns that says Nap Squad yeah. on it. <laughs> <gasps> it's the length of my body. <laughs> 
I had a lot of fabric, and you know, I could make a tube. So I made a tube. <laughs> I could make a tube. <laughs> I'm going to stuff it with so much fluff. Yay. Yeah, I couldn't find any fluff. I forgot to get fluff, so... But I figured we have pillows, so we could put it on the pillows. And then it's a nap squat pillow. I will... Octopus it. Just so you know. Good. Um, And the last thing is that Aviva pulls out a little, like... I guess, almost like a foldery kind of thing. Like a thing to keep paper in. And then does the kind of, like, going around to each person taking out. And she's done a bunch of, like, charcoal on paper drawings Aww. of everybody. Aww. Now, it's interesting. I'm going to roll a dex check because I'm curious if they're good or not. And that feels like <laughs> the most relevant number here. 16! Hey! Okay. So they're actually pretty well done. And it's kind of like people in their element. Like, there's one that Finn gets of him cooking... And, like, one of Mr. Hurst whittling. And, like, Veli looking very cool and intimidating. Kind of almost anime style. A little bit <laughs> Yeah. And, like, Bondar, like, looking majestic and captainly with the kestrel behind her. There's one for Lachlan and Jill that's them making hard eyes at each other. There's a secret Dewey. one where... Yeah. <laughs> And none of, like, Dewey sorting books. Aww. Yeah, little drawings for everybody. That's so cute! Yeah, was very bashful about it all. But it's like, here you go. I hope you like them. <laughs> this is all amazing, you guys. I just, I, I didn't buy anything specific, but all those new board games? From me. <laughs> nice. We nice. have probably played at least a couple of them so far today. I, like, Fantasy Catan. No. <laughs> How is Fantasy Catan different from regular Catan? It's different. We're not playing Fantasy Catan. Not again. You made me play that <laughs> once. I hated it. Space Sheep. Ah, uh, Space Battle Sheep. Space, space battle Mysterium. Space All right, Mysterium. and uh, as, as, as this sort of wraps up, the captain pokes her head up through the hatch and sort of rests her elbows on the floor around and it goes, okay, in the spirit of the season, I do have a present uh, for you guys. Ooh, uh, aside, aside from your paycheck, which you just got today, by the way, and it, it is it it is this: Who wants to learn how to shoot? <gasps> yes, yes, me, okay. me. yes, me. yes. Me. <laughs> Artie goes first, but I think we're all going to line up for this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, so she takes you out onto the deck, uh, and you guys uh, take turns uh, learning to fire a gun. And you guys are now all proficient in firearms. Ooh. Yay! Nice. Yay! Um, Artie does give the whole crew something. Okay. He gives all the people a shell. And he's like, so originally this was going to be one free blowjob, but <laughs> Mr. Hirsch said that is not cool because <laughs> not everyone wants that. So it would be highly inappropriate in a work environment. <laughs> what he said. So this is also, all. Also, I'm not really interested in you, Artie. Sorry. That's that's why it's an optional thing. <laughs> so instead, it is one free. I do your chore, but not if it's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. That's you know, Excellent. considering that's incredibly thoughtful, Artie. Yeah, thank you, Artie. Good I'm job. Very magnanimous. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's very humble of me. Oh, and also, Alviva, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Alviva! Yeah, it's... How a, did we pick this? You're now, we birthday. don't know how old you are. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, for for Ethlins, this is usually when we celebrate, you know, the end of the year. Uh, the day's getting longer, and also that's when we all celebrate our birthday, so... Well, happy birthday to you, Jill. Thanks. Oh, well, happy birthday, Jill. I've been, what are you, like, 40? 50? Juliana's face falls the higher the number gets. <laughs> 24, Artie. I'm, I'm 24 now. You're what? Yeah. She's I've been hanging baby. out with babies? Yeah, she's just a baby, Artie. But... How did, 
More like hanging out with babes. What? <laughs> hey. And Alviva, uh, how old do you think you are now at this point? What do you want to? What do you want to round to? I have no. I have no goddamn idea. Feel like a twenty? That's a nice round number. All right, yeah, nice that's... round number. Let's go with twenty, 20 and we'll adjust if we figure out otherwise. <laughs> sure, twenty. Nice. Was set in long years. Huh. Happy midwinter birth, Anox. You all get a thousand experience points. Yay! <laughs> Yay! We solved your gift giving puzzle. <laughs> Would you believe at some point I actually I actually made a carol for this? Now are you going to sing your carol or are you going to share the words? <laughs> no, I can't. It's just um it's just to the words of uh oh fuck, it's the please put a penny in the old man's hat. That one. Do, do you guys know that one? I do not know that no, one, I don't, I don't. think. Uh, Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a hey penny will do. If you haven't got a hey penny, when the God bless you. And you do that in a round. <laughs> cool. Um, so this one is... Uh, <clears throat> Midwinter Bertha knocks the storm lady is here. Blessings upon you as you turn the year. If you haven't done a kindness, the abbess comes for you. Now bid the fire <laughs> higher till the night is through. Because I feel like it's not Christmas if there's not a slight thread in there. It's yeah, gotta absolutely. be very slightly threaded. Yeah, it yeah. Has to be slightly threaded. <laughs> there needs to be a slight like thread. It. Yeah. There's definitely a part of the day or the days leading up where Alviva nervously comes up to Jill and is like, I've done some things <laughs> that people are mad about. Uh-huh. Is is the horse gonna eat me? How, well how, what do I do to appease the horse? <laughs> Well, I mean, we're not really into confessions or anything, but let me tell you a secret. The gift giving part, that's in place of like, that that's to prove that you did something good this year. <laughs> oh, so it's like a bribe. It's a little bit of a bribe. Yeah. <laughs> also, we were, we all, also, as far as I understand, all the Athlons got kind of lazy and we're like, well, we don't need to be good all year round. But, you know, we did. We did something nice for each other. I think there used to be a thing where you had to like go around in a table and tell everybody what good things you did this year, and they were like, "No, let's just do presents instead." Religion is just bribes. That's yeah, true. it's a lot of bribery. But okay. look, Alviva, listen, mm -hmm. this isn't even your holiday, so you're probably fine. But also, I know you're doing your best. Oh, don't make me get all weepy, Jill. <laughs> Oh, not on. on, not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> she will, in fact, ruffle Alviva's hair. No, Alviva loves it, <laughs> but has to complain a little bit. I know. Okay, I guess I'm safe. Good to know I can keep doing bad things. Ha ha! And Alviva teleports <laughs> <Hey>! away. <laughs> that's not what. The, that's not the takeaway. <sighs> We're working on it. <laughs> uh actually actually if we are if we are gathered at some point jill probably will do a little bit of a speech <laughs> as you guys how about as you guys are wrapping up the shooting lesson with captain bondar yeah actually uh i did kind of want to say something um to to everybody uh um i i i kind of imagine this would be over drinks or something at some point during the, yeah. during the day you at this point, like, you, you're sick of all being crowded into the same room, so at this point you're all just hanging out on the deck. Drinks and learning to shoot with your family go hand in hand. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and then also, like, there's enough room out here for, like, Stuart and the owl, uh, who doesn't have a name yet, and, and Rat Mercer to uh, hang out as well. It's probably, like, I imagine that's probably everybody has come out to similar, summarily judge the people who are learning how to shoot and, tell, and yell oh, how absolutely. crappy they are. Yeah. Uh, Hey, if, I just wanted to say, um, listen, I know this isn't everybody's, th this isn't, you know, everybody's got their own sort of solstice traditions, but I, I wanted to say thanks for indulging me, I guess. Um, it's been about six months now since we left home, and I guess it's been really weird. Um, but it's also been really great, and I'm glad that we could kind of bring a piece of home with us. And, well, I guess I'm glad that 
I'm glad that home can be somewhere besides a planet. I'm glad home can be this and family can be this and thanks for tolerating me, uh, us. There's no toleration about it. Love you, Jill. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, um, <clears throat> um, uh, lo lo love you too. Uh, let's drink. Drink. <laughs> hey. hey. Salute. By the way, I did have a couple of sendings. Um, I, I need to do at least one or two of them on air, but the other two okay. that we can do off air. Okay. Two of them are, she's going, she'll do a couple of sendings to, uh, the, uh, to Mother Sylvia, and one to the Reverend Mother, like the Mother Superior at her convent, because it's Christmas cards, and you have to do that. <laughs> uh, otherwise, they'll be mad if you didn't send them a card. But I have one sent, but that's two of her sendings, so she has three slots. Uh, the other one is, she sends one to Tuatha. <laughs> and that is, season's greetings to you and yours on this, the Eesheim Solstice. May our paths cross again someday. Thanks for the smut and advice. Your frenemy, Juliana. Oh, <laughs> I do have a reply from Jake. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Season's greetings to you too. Hope it's hmm? Jill from space. <laughs> In my head. <laughs> Magic. Duh. It's summer. Here, you're wasting my words. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jill. Hope you all is great. Can we see you all again? Bye. <laughs> was that 25 words? I think it was slightly less. Well, the last one is all slurred together <laughs> into one word. Does that count? I don't know. <laughs> can that count? I think chaos magic can make that count if we're going to if we're going to mulligan yeah. it. If we're going to no prize that one, I think chaos magic works. Yeah, that's fair. And I have one more. Juliana is going to. Uh, that's her third slot. That's that's all of her third level slots. Juliana will pace around wherever she is. She's probably gone somewhere quiet for this at the moment. Mutter to herself. Consider finger her pearl of power. That's oh, that's a sentence. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Oh, that's what she does when she's alone, yeah. Uh, mm, uh, he's busy, he's busy, he's busy. It's stupid, don't worry about it. It's stupid, it's fine, it's fine. Fuck. She will trigger the Pearl of Power, regain a third level spell slot, and she'll send something to Max. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi. It's... It's the winter solstice back home. Traditionally, you spend it with people you care about and I you <sighs> never mind <laughs> not <laughs> important don't don't reply and then uh, to herself Fuck. And that's 25. <laughs> <laughs> you get back. Happy solstice, Jill. I miss you. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> okay, great. That's all my special holiday bullshit. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first off, uh, you guys you guys finish out your uh, your midwinter winter birthinox vigil. Uh, Jill, are you going to pop a fifth level spell on Dawn? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I will make a fake sunrise and I'm going to like slowly position it over the, over the lip of the, over the lip of the deck. <laughs> okay. I do want to check something with Dawn because I did notice when I was moving all your spells over, there's actually a material component that has a gold person, a gold piece component, mm -hmm. but it's not consumed. So we can say that you just bought that while you were in Senegora. Okay. So yeah, you just got to knock off like a hundred gold pieces and you have that sunburst pendant now. Cool. All right, so you, you, you see a, a glorious sunrise uh, uh, come up over uh, the edge of the ship uh, to mark the end of the midwinter birth and ox vigil. And as everyone is probably going to bed because you were up all night, uh -huh. Cacophony, you get ascending. Ooh. You hear Thesita's voice in your head. Where are you? Or if you're in transit, where are you going to be? I need to send you something, but it's over 25 words. Ooh. 
Uh, we're heading to the world of Tafos. Is uh, I, I will I will reply with a letter. <laughs> uh, it's always nice to hear your voice. You sound lovely. <laughs> How many words have you put together with that? <laughs> and that hits twenty five. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Gem Jammer is performed by Alexi Peppers, Annie Creighton, Kit Walker, Mackenzie Weaver, and Rio, and is edited by Jake Mason. Our character designs are by Rio, who you can find at vriosart on Twitter, and our cover art is by Canary Witch, who you can find at doodlesfromthebird.tumblr.com. Our opening and closing music is by Reckoning Storm Audio Works. For more episodes of the show and our other shows, as well as news, check out our website at crookedrussiancamp.horse. I'm hearing kitchen noises in the background. Mackenzie? Mackenzie? What is happening? Do you need a sec? Yes. Don't worry about it. You're yes. filling up a pan? Okay. I'm filling up a pan. Yes, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>